Hi, boys and girls. Miss Austin is here with you today, and we're going to be looking at 2.7c, where we represent and solve addition and subtraction word problems where unknowns may be any one of the terms in the problem. What? So what that means is that we're going to look at problems where we might not have all of the information. And we're going to take a look today at how to set that problem up to help us to come up with a plan to solve. So let's just jump in right away. Okay, we're just going to go over some of our vocabulary to represent. That means they want us to write down a number sentence. They want us to show what our plan is. Addition, we know what addition is. That's when we're joining things, subtraction. That's where we're comparing things or we're taking things away. Um, unknown, something that we haven't figured out yet. We don't know what the answer is. In terms, those are the numbers that we do have, the information we do have available to us to help us to learn. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem we have here. Take a second, look at the problem in the blue box and I want you to read it to yourself and then we'll read it together. Okay, Sean had 64 crayons in his school supply box. He gave 38 crayons to Myra. How many crayons does Sean have left? Mommy, what is this? Oh, sorry about that. I had a little visitor. So let's get back to it. How many crayons does Sean have left? Okay, guys, so right here in this blue area with the question marks, this is called a part, part, whole model. And the way it's set up is this line right here represents the whole number. The number that is the biggest part of the problem. These little areas of the squares are the parts. So we have part, part, whole. If you put the two parts together, it's gonna give you the whole thing. So we have to figure out what is the part and what is the whole. And that's really what we're going to focus on today. A good thing to remember and to do when you're getting into these problems is to go in order, especially when we're writing our number sentence. And you can see this green area down here at the bottom says number sentence. And so we'll do that in just a moment to check ourselves. But what we're going to do here is to take a look at this problem and figure out what's the whole and what are the parts. So Sean had 64 crayons in his school supply box. Okay, he's got a box. Inside of his box, he has 64 crayons. Okay, he gave 38 crayons to Myra. Let's see, is he getting more crayons? I don't think that he is. I really have to picture this inside of my head. So Sean has this box of crayons. He has 64 crayons inside of his box. And then he's going to give some to Myra. In fact, he's giving her 38. So he's not putting some in. He's taking 38 out. What kind of math is that there? Hmm, if he's taking them out, Sean is subtracting them. He's giving them to somebody else. He's subtracting those crayons. So he had a total of 64, and then he took 38 out. What is left? I don't know, but it's gonna be smaller than 64. <gasps> that means 
that 64 is the whole heart all together sean is going to have a total at the beginning of the story of 64 crayons now he took out 38 crayons that's what he gave to myra so what did he have left well whatever is in the box is what we're trying to find out here so if we take a look at our number sentence if we take our 64 crayons and we take away 38, it's gonna give us the answer. Now, this number sentence goes completely with this word problem. Sean had 64 crayons in his school box. He gave 38 crayons to Myra. How many crayons does Sean have left? It follows along exactly. When we come and we look at our part, part, whole model, this is where students can get a little bit confused. Why is 64 the whole thing? Hmm, did he end up with more crayons in his box? No, he didn't. He had only 64 crayons and then he took some out. So whatever he has left is going to be smaller than 64. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Now, this one is very similar. If you notice, we're still talking about Sean, still talking about crayons. And I really like this flip chart because they are showing us how a problem can be changed just a little bit to give us all kinds of situations. So let's read through this one. I'll give you a second to read it by yourself and then we'll read it together. Sean has 26 crayons. His teacher gave him some more crayons. Now Sean has 64 crayons. How many crayons did Sean's teacher give him? Okay, so think to yourself, what's the whole amount of crayons? A lot of time, not a lot of times, all the time, our whole amount is usually going to be that biggest number. Okay, we have to think, what is the biggest number? So Sean has 26 crayons. Well, I see the number 64, so I don't think 26 is gonna be the biggest number. His teacher gave him some more crayons. I don't know how many his teacher gave him, but she gave him more. Mm -hmm. Now Sean has 64 crayons. Let's see, could the number his teacher gave him be more than 64? I don't think so because he had 26. If he had 26 and then he got 64, more crayons, that number, just gonna estimate it, um, about 60, 26 is about 30, 60, whoops, plus 30, that's about 90. Did Sean have 90 crayons? No, it tells me very clearly, Sean has 64 crayons. So this is my whole number. All together, Sean has 64 crayons. Sean has 26 crayons. His teacher gave him some more crayons. Now Sean has 64. So with this word problem, we should have 26 crayons plus some more will equal 64. 26 plus some more equals 64. Let's take a look at this question. Boys and girls, go ahead and read, and then we'll read together. Sean had some crayons. Myra gave him 38 more crayons. 
Now Sean has 64 crayons. How many crayons did Sean have to begin with? Okay, hey, so let's take a look at our parts and our whole. So Sean had some crayons. How many? I'm not sure, it doesn't tell me yet, but I know he has some. Myra gave him 38 more crayons. Could 38 be the total number of crayons that he had? No, it wouldn't make sense because he had some and then he got 38 more. So I had to put those two together. Now Sean has 64 crayons. That's my whole, that's how many he has for the whole thing. So in this model, boys and girls, the whole thing, 64 crayons, is the same thing as something plus 38. So if we're going along with the word problem, Sean had some crayons. Okay, there's our unknown. Myra gave him 38 more plus 38. Now Sean has 64 crayons, 64 crayons, okay. Sean had 64 crayons. He gave some of his crayons to Myra. Now he has 26 crayons left. How many crayons did Sean give to Myra? Okay, how many crayons did Sean have in all? How many? Crayons is the biggest answer that you have. Let's go back and reread. Sean had 64 crayons. He gave some to Myra. Okay, so I'm picturing this in my head. He has 64 crayons and then he gives some away. That's to take away. So my whole number has to be those 64 crayons that Sean had. This is also where I'm starting with. So I bet my number sentence is going to start with 64. And look at that. He gave some crayons to Myra. How many? I don't know. But I know that he gave some to Myra. Look at that. Now he has 26 crayons left. So the other part is 26. This will give us that a total of 64 crayons, take away something, leaves us with 26. And remember boys and girls, this week the only thing we're focused on is problem solving. We want you to think like a problem solver. So we want you to really understand the part whole whole excuse me, the hard part whole model. And we want you to understand how to write a number sentence based off the word problem that you see. And then later we'll get into solving these problems. So we're not even looking for the answers this week. We want to see, can you use this model and can you set up a number sentence to show me which part is missing? Hey, so um, this one, it's going to sound a little familiar to you, I believe. So let's just take a look at it. Sean had 26 crayons. Myra gave him 38 more crayons. How many crayons does Sean have in all? So in this situation, yes, they're asking us a question. So technically something's missing, but this is a lot more familiar to questions that you've seen before. Sean had 26 crayons. That's how many he started with. It's only a part. It's not all the crayons. It's just a part of it. Now Myra gave him 38 more crayons. He was his birthday. Now our question is how many crayons does Sean have in all? So the part that's missing is the whole. That's what they're asking us. The unknown this time is how many crayons does Sean have in the whole thing? So going along with our problem, we have 26 crayons that belong to Sean. Myra gives him 38 more, and now we want to know how many does he have all together? So I'm gonna give you a chance to practice this one. Sean had some crayons in his school supply box. He gave 38 crayons to Myra. Now he has 26 crayons left. 
how many crayons did Sean have to begin with? I want you on your notebook paper to make yourself a whole part part model or part part whole. And I want you to write the number sentence that matches this problem. Go ahead and pause your video and then you can come back to me when you're done so we can check together. Okay, so Sean had some crayons in his school box. We don't know how many he had, but he had some. He gave 38 crayons to Myra. Now he has 26 crayons left. How many crayons did Sean have to begin with? Well, Sean started with some. I don't know how many he had, but he started with some. So this is my question mark, and this is where I need to figure out where does this go? Now, I can see that he gave 38 away. Oh, if he gave 38 away, that's subtracting, which means whatever number he started with would be the whole thing. He started with some crayons, and then he gave 38 away, and now he has 26 left. Let's see. He started with some. He gave away 38. And now he has 26. Good job, guys. Let's check out one more. Sean has 26 red crayons and 38 blue crayons. How many crayons does he have? Go ahead, pause the video, set up your whole part part, and write your number sentence, and then come back to check with me, please. Okay, Sean has 26 red crayons and 38 blue crayons. How many crayons does he have? I don't know, but that's what they're asking me. How many crayons does he have? and the entire thing. That's what we don't know. But I do know that Sean started with 26 red and he had 38 blue. And if I put the red ones together with the blue ones, it'll tell me how many crayons he had all together. So there's Sean's 26 red crayons plus his 38 blue crayons and that gave us a total number. Hey, this is the last one we're gonna do today, boys and girls, before I let you go on and work on your own. Sean has 64 crayons in his school supply box. 26 are red and the rest are blue. How many blue crayons does Sean have? Please pause the video, set up your part part whole model and your number sentence, and then come back to check. Okay, so Sean has 64 crayons in his school supply box. 26 are red and the rest are blue. How many blue crayons does Sean have? Well, I know all together Sean has 64 crayons in that box. That's his total number, 64. Now some of those crayons, 26 of them are red and the rest are blue. I don't know how many are blue, but it's the rest of them. So the whole number is the 64 crayons, that's the total number of crayons he has, and then 26 blue ones will be our part, or excuse me, 26 red ones is our part, and the unknown is how many are blue. So if we set up this problem, we start with Sean had 64 crayons, some of them are red, and whatever's left are blue. Okay, boys and girls, so now it's time for you to do your assignment. I want you to go and look at your assignment page. You're going to have some word problems. For each word problem, you are going to show me the part, part, whole model, and you're going to show me a number sentence. It's as easy as drawing a line and a rectangle cut in half. Nope, nope. So 
please go ahead, get that started, and then turn into your teacher. And sorry for the interruptions today, boys and girls. My kiddos are wanting to say hi. Say hi, say hi, boys and girls. See you later. Oh, goodness. Okay, so Ms. Austin, we'll see you guys next week. Stay safe.